Hi and welcome back. So if you follow the channel, you'll know as part of my NMN experiment, I have my blood scores taken every three months and every three months my LDL score comes back as high because I follow a low carb, high fat, fairly high protein diet. The comments that then follow are to immediately move to a plant-based diet or um, I will die of a heart attack. But how important is LDL as a single marker when it comes to estimating cardiovascular disease risk? Well, let's find out. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Cara Mures, which looked into the changing ideas of heart disease risk and your lipid scores. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. On your top 10 list of things to do, getting your cholesterol level checked probably doesn't make the cut. But no matter your age, Knowing your numbers can be a crucial factor in your overall health and your well-being, as well as probably increasing your lifespan and your health span. You might not think about your cholesterol levels very often, if ever, but it's important to know what your numbers are. Dr. Michael Fabernack, a cardiologist at Penn State Health's Milton S. Hershey Medical Center, said people in their 20s may never consider getting their cholesterol checked, but they should, because it may uncover a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol that they didn't know about. The sooner it's treated, the more damage you can prevent. So at what age should you get your first cholesterol test? The National Heart, Blood and Lung Institute recommend initial testing between the age of 9 and 11 and then every five years after that. People who are 40 or over should get a lipid panel every year and you should ask to have it added if your primary care physician doesn't automatically order the test. But what is cholesterol and what does it actually do? Cholesterol is a waxy substance made in the liver and found in the blood and all of your body cells. It is needed for making cell walls, creating hormones, and it acts as a protectant for all cells too. Your brain accounts for around 2% of your body's total weight, but it contains 20% of your total cholesterol. To check your cholesterol numbers, you need to take a test called a lipid panel. This measures lipoproteins along with total cholesterol, triglycerides and the fatty acids in the blood that the body uses for energy. High levels of triglycerides combined with low HDL cholesterol can increase the risk for plaque buildup, fatty liver disease, heart attack and even stroke. The recommended threshold for total cholesterol is under 200 milligrams per deciliter, but it's also important to note your non-HDL cholesterol number two. That's the score you get when you subtract your HDL number from your total cholesterol score. Dr. Fabernak stated, we have shifted our thinking away from the total value because we know we were underestimating people's risk and they were dying of heart disease. If your total cholesterol is under 200, but your HDL is 25 and your LDL is 170, that's not good. Now, according to Penn State, it's important to treat the risk and not to just look at your individual numbers. Ideally, non-HDL cholesterol should be less than 130 milligrams per deciliter for people without any risk factors. The LDL level should be less than 70 milligrams per deciliter for those with elevated heart disease risk because of family or a personal history of heart or blood vessel disease and for those with inherited high cholesterol that isn't affected by changes to either their diet and or exercise. Also, your triglyceride values should be less the 150 milligrams per deciliter. A value or a score above 200 is now considered high. But what are the other markers that can put you into the elevated risk category? So even if you have good lipid panel scores, having high blood pressure, being obese, having diabetes, suffering from premature heart disease, vascular disease, and familial hypercholesterolemia, 
can boost your risk. You can estimate your odds of cardiovascular disease by using the American College of Cardiology's risk estimator. And there's a link to this site in the description below. Dr. Fabernak says the most important thing is to get a lipid panel done. Nobody can feel if they have high cholesterol, but the results of a test can help us to treat preventatively for a healthier future. For those with high cholesterol, the most popular treatment at the moment is a prescription for a statin. Lipitor, a Pfizer medication, has become, according to some, the gold standard of statins and continues to generate for that company roughly two billion dollars per year but statin efficacy versus the risk has now become a point of debate as has the lipid score reference range which is also the trigger for a doctor to write a prescription in this next clip dr sean baker talks about statins and a study of 12.8 million people that showed the longevity sweet spot for total cholesterol was between 210 and 249, well above the recommended score of 200. All right, when I first started medical school back in the late 1980s, I remember talking to you know the, the, the attending physicians, and they were mentioning that you know these uh, statins that were new that, that are that are just coming out. Uh, actually, it was in the early 90s that they should be in the water. They should actually be in the drinking water because, uh, you know, everyone has cholesterol, high cholesterol, uh, and, and that we need to do this. And this is something that, uh, uh, you know, has nearly been the case. So many people have been prescribed statins, one of the most prescribed drugs in the world up to this point. Uh, literally hundreds of billions, if not more than a trillion dollars in drug company profits have, have been realized due to these drugs alone. Uh, there's a new study that just came out, uh, the other day, looking at the thought that LDL cholesterol is contributing to heart disease, and this study seriously can, uh, um, questions uh, the reliability of that particular relationship and the fact that maybe it's, the relationship is not as strong as we think it is. It also looks at um, the use of statins for lowering LDL cholesterol, and does it actually have a true benefit, or is that benefit very minor? And, and the study concludes that it seems to be a pretty minor benefit. It's inconsistent, and that maybe we need to reevaluate uh, the way we look at these types of things. And again, we're seeing stronger and stronger evidence when it comes to heart disease. The things that really, truly seem to make a big difference. Again, I've said this before: diabetes, pre-diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, blood pressure, and then history of smoking. Those things seem to be the most impactful things when it comes to preventing. Cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular disease, again, as you know, is the number one killer. In the United States, something around 800,000 people a year, I think, die from cardiovascular disease. And so if we can focus on metabolic health, improving or getting, getting rid of and reversing diabetes, uh, improving obesity, improving hypertension, obviously the continued efforts to, to prevent people from wanting to smoke would be great and take less emphasis on LDL cholesterol because a lot of the diets that improve all the things we're talking about, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, sometimes raise cholesterol. And the question is, which is a bigger you know, problem? Is it raising the cholesterol or would it be better to have low cholesterol and yet have more obesity, more hypertension, uh, more glucose problems, metabolic syndrome? And I think the answer is clearly these things are much more powerful. And so the question is, does a person who is free from diabetes, obesity, hypertension, metabolic syndrome is lean and has higher cholesterol, does that person fare better than the person who has low cholesterol but several of these other risk factors? And I think clearly the evidence seems to be pointing that the person with all the good stuff and a little bit of high cholesterol is probably at less risk than the person with low cholesterol and all these other things. Now, of course, some people would say, well, the best solution would be get rid of all those things and lower the cholesterol. And again, I don't know that we have data data to support that assertion. We, you know, it's, it's, you know, some people say safe rather than sorry. Um, I think if you have to lower cholesterol using medications, then perhaps that's not the right approach. So if your diet doesn't fix everything, then perhaps you need to be on a different diet and worry about fixing these other things. 
let the cholesterol be where it is. You remember I showed you guys a study from uh, South Korea, 12.8 million people looking at all-cause mortality and cholesterol. The most beneficial or least likely to die group were those that have total cholesterol between 210 and 249 milligrams per deciliter, which is much higher than places like the American Heart Association would recommend it be. So interesting times. Uh, remember, the science is often wrong for you, the, 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 the follow the science people. And so maybe this new study is wrong. Maybe the old studies are wrong. Hard to say. I'm leaning towards what gives me objective and subjective health as the best way to, you know, live my life. I want to feel good. I want to, I want to perform well. I want to you know, maybe even look good. So out of curiosity, I use my latest blood test results and my latest blood pressure reading to try the American College of Cardiology's risk estimator. My score came back as for my 10 year calculated risk was 8%. But when adjusted for optimal factors, that's answering all the lifestyle questions they ask you, it went down to 5.2. My lifetime calculated risk was 46 but the risk was then adjusted for optimal factors down to 5%. So the average of my 10 year and my lifetime risk is 5.1%, which I think is pretty good. But what do you think their recommendation was for me with an average score of or an average risk of 5.1%? Yes, they want to give me or they want to start me on a statin drug. Also, interestingly, at the clinic where I get my blood tests done every three months, they've started to include a page at the end of the report that groups all of the cardiac risk markers together, all the factors they show, which does not include LDL, from my test of April in 2023 are all well within the reference range for these cardiac risk markers. If you think back, Dr. Fabernak stated, we have shifted our thinking away from the total cholesterol value because we know we were underestimating people's risk and they were dying of heart disease. And the marker used by the American College of Cardiology's risk estimator, total cholesterol and HDL. And the clinic where I have my blood drawn don't consider lipid scores at all as a risk for cardiovascular disease. So no clear answer which from a personal perspective is very confusing and from a professional perspective does not shed the best light on this element of the medical community. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I think there's now growing evidence to show that LDL as a single marker is not the bringer of death that it was once thought to be. Of the two tests that I used to calculate my risk, none of them included LDL as a standalone marker, but there are many who will, vegans, the likes of Dr. Gregor will tell you that LDL is the only marker you should look at. If it's high, you're gonna die, and the only way to prevent that is to go onto a plant-based diet. Um, let me know in the comments below, when did you last get your cholesterol level checked? I'd be interested to see that. And also, if your LDL was ever so slightly high, did your doctor automatically prescribe you with a statin?